all right so welcome now to part two of how to craft the school improvement plan again we are making this video for our principals test uh, reviewers that are that we are having here uh, today so we would like to uh, invite you to watch part one in case you have missed part one all right so um, for this time we're going to discuss the following we're going to identify the three key result area of basic education and link it to the SIP process and we try to determine the activities in preparing the SIP development and then familiarize ourselves of the different tools in gathering information on the situation of children and learners in terms of their access to quality basic education and the situation of the school in terms of governance. We're also going to talk about um, how to manifest appreciation of the SIP utility in improving the schools. All right, so right at this point, we are already in phase one or what we know as assess um, in part one we discuss the preparatory activities that you as a school leader should do in order for you to uh, be ready for phase one right so what are the specific steps under phase one or assess so this is step two now because we have preparatory activities that we have to conducted in um, the first part which is the preparatory activities so we try to identify priority improvement areas. So present and discuss the information gathered during the preparatory activities. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, present and discuss the information gathered. And then we initiate discussion in the status of the school by presenting the SR SRC or the summary of the SCDT. So look into the gaps uh, with division targets and use the gap analysis template. So we're going to try to see what are really the missing parts, missing problems, uh, the most pressing problems that we have in our um, the data that we have gathered. So SIPs are meant to bridge the gap between the current state of the school and the desired state as per DEDP. All these things here is our bridge to really um, be more better in terms of being a school. Okay, so we're going to base it on the gaps that we have identified in the first part, right? So as we can see here, this is the gap analysis template. Uh, as you can see, we have region, division, district, barangay, and school. We write that down. We use the matrix on the next page as a guide to accessing the gap between the division targets and the school performance. In particular, you can fill out the matrix by answering the following questions for each division target. So uh, it's important for us to also know what are the division targets. So that we'll be able to contribute to that division target and help us achieve things for our division office right so here we have division targets data needed currently contributing yes or no what are the inhibiting factors what are the reasons behind why why we are we are not contributing to that or are we an inhibiting factor uh, then you try to look at the projects implemented and the groups that require uh, attention uh, are there things that requires attention in your part right so like for example the division target is 0 0.1 dropout rate you try to fill that up in order for you to fill and identify what are the things that you need to do in order for you to really uh, contribute uh, so as we can see here this is an example okay right so you may pause the video if you like in order for you to see the example so after doing that we can proceed now to activity 2.1 so we present and discuss the information gathered during the preparatory activity so you may ask the following questions what surface as the most pressing need or problem and what trends surface from your data did your school improve stagnate worsen uh, what did your school find alarming from the data and what needs the most improvement so it's really a form of reflection as to how you're going to improve yourselves and the school itself, right? So write down the results of this, the discussion to come up with initial list of improvement areas. You can have this working list of priority improvement areas. So you may group related or similar problems uh, in order for you to identify which one is really very important. So make sure you document the discussion. You have an initial list of improvement areas and you have the gap analysis template. The gap analysis template is just a means for you to identify the priority improvement areas. Okay, for year two and three, begin with this step. So if you are done with the first year, you present the data collected from the monitoring progress of prior AAP and the SPT. You may use the gap analysis template and the guide questions again. 
and review the list of improvement areas in the SIP. So this is one of the major things that school heads should take note. The SPT is is not something that should convene only in the first year, right? In fact, the process of continuous improvement is something that should be done every year or as as much and as frequent as possible in order for you to really conduct this school improvement thing. Um, School improvement means continuous improvement is something that you should do every now and then uh, following the processes of reflection, assessing, uh, planning, and then acting based on the feedback that you have gathered. For me, it should be something that should be done as frequently as possible. As you can see here in year two and three, uh, you may reflect on the AIP uh, that you have done before and then you try to see if uh, there are things that you can improve on those things okay so don't miss a step the output of the step is your input to the next step right so identify priority improvement areas present and discuss the information gathered during the preparatory activities right so PIAs or the priority improvement areas are the most pressing needs or problems within and outside of the school that surface from your school and learners data so there's no limit to the number of ps remember that it is important that the spt makes priority list of ps and ps have varying difficulties uh, you may also use this prioritization rub prioritization rubric so you may consider strategic importance like for example would this have a great impact uh, if this improves would that benefit as many people as possible urgency is it very urgent or need to improve the area as soon as possible the magnitude the number of learners that will benefit when the improvement area is addressed and and feasibility the degree in which the improvement area is within the school's mandate and control so you may scale them or rate them from five to one with five as very high and one as very low and you may grade them like this and you will be able to see if which among the priority improvement areas is your top priority in this case the very high priority uh, goes to low english literacy okay so as you can see their high dropout rate moderate priority okay so you may pause the video if you like and then you place the priority improvement area there in the part right so um, activity 2.2 we're done output check we have the priority improvement template we're done with that first column the planning worksheet right so the school planning team will review the PIAs listed in the planning worksheet worksheet and it, a cases where the P, PIA has already been addressed choose another PIA to take on the ones you have identified so you may use again the PIA template to check these priority improvement areas Rate your knowledge about the concepts using the following. All right. Are you familiar with these words? Objectives, smart, incremental targets, clear and concise. Right. So these are the things that you should do when you do uh, create general objectives. Right. So you need to set general objectives for each. So formulate measurable objectives for a three-year plan. Set incre incremental targets for your PIAs that extend more than a year. Okay, for example, you can have improved math scores of uh, grade 3 students by 20% at the end of 3 years. Math scores of grade 3 students improved by 10%. Uh, math scores of grade 3 students improved by 15% from year 1 scores. Okay, so those are examples of general objectives for year 1, 2, and 3 so that you can put this in your annual improvement plan. Okay, so PIA dropped out. What is it about the PIA that made it an... Uh, IA, right? So our school dropout rate is significantly higher at 4% versus our division standard level. Okay. Then what do you want to happen? We want our school's dropout rate uh, to reduce from 4% to our division standard level 1%. So what to do? To reduce, to do what? The dropout rate. Objective to reduce the dropout rate. Uh, Okay, so the beginning level is 4%, the target is 1% in 3 years or by 2019. So just remember when you develop objective, it should be specific, uh, measurable, and attainable, uh, realistic, and time-bound. So it should be smart. Okay. 
So using your SRC and other monitoring reports, revisit your SIP objectives and check and update these objectives accordingly. So like for example, uh, this is a, an example of a general objective. So to increase the MPS in English from a range of 49.88 to 59.96 to 75 in three years. So you need to have a baseline, a target, and a time period. And place your general objectives there. All right. So output check, accomplish a second column, the planning worksheet or the Annex 5. Okay, next step is you organize your project teams. So the project team may be drawn from the community teachers and learners with at least one member coming from the SPT. For PIAs related to the teaching learning process, organize project team from the members of the learning action cells. Right, so the project members should be someone very close to the process that you wanted to improve. Right, so... Uh, the, pro uh, the school planning team is the overall overarching theme, the uh, team that is looking uh, to really uh, do the planning process. However, the project team is now focused on a specific uh, priority improvement area that you want to be to be improved. All right. So together, everyone team everyone team achieves more. Schools may use the IPCR to determine project team members and to encourage teachers. To join project teams. In short, um, as school leaders, we should try to align all their requirements, all the um, all the improvements that you wanted to do in terms of their performance. So it should be aligned to the IPCRF. The project team discusses PIA and the possible factors affecting the PIAs. For PIAs that last more than a year, utilize the same project team. Remember that for the next year, they should be the same team. Check the performance of the project team and change the membership if necessary. Okay, output check. Project team members list with roles and responsibilities of team cluster and list of possible factors affecting your assigned PIA. Right, so next step is to listen to the voice of the learners and other stakeholders. Right, so th this is one of the most crucial steps in the SIP process. The project team should talk to the learners and stakeholders who are relevant to your assigned PIAs. So listening can be done through one-on-one -on -one dyads, triads, interview surveys, focus group discussions with learners, parents, and other stakeholders. You can also do home visits might be necessary. However, take into consideration that right now we are in a pandemic, so might as well as utilize other platforms like Google, uh, the Google Meet, and the Zoom. So this step is also a good opportunity to ask learners or stakeholders on how they have helped uh, by your school. So questions in FGD should focus on how. It's not a one-shot activity, but continuously listen to the voice of the learners. So SIP is a process. Methodological listening to the voice of the learners can happen at any time. Okay, Listening to the voice of the learners and other stakeholders should not be skipped in the following years because the context needs and views of the learners and stakeholders might have changed so output check documentation of the fgds records of your interviews or home visits okay so we will now analyze the school process uh, how do we analyze it so we can uh, consider uh, the following process represents an action or set of actions show sequence of execution the beginning of set of actions stops all flows in activity that's the end and this is the decision node and then waiting. A process is a set of activities that are arranged together in order to deliver a product or a service. A process must also be simple enough to be repeatable and replicable. The project team should map out the process involved in the assigned PIA or priority improvement area through the use of a flowchart or what is currently happening in each step of the process and not what the process should be. So this step is to understand why and where the needs of the problem exist. So you can actually do it to identify the missing elements of the process, including decision points, to validate elements conceived during brainstorming, to check for missing elements of the process, and more importantly, to validate the elements identified during brainstorming and interviews. So brainstorm, you conduct interviews, and then directly observe the process. All right. So. Sample process map, you start here uh, preparing the test, then that's the next step, distributing the test papers, and then answering the test paper, then checking the papers, recording the test scores, and then analyzing the performance on items. And, and that is actually an example of a process map. 
So to analyze the school process, do direct observations. When you do direct observation, you will notice problems arising in specific activities in the current process. Okay, say for example, in that particular step, there are specific problems that have been encountered. You may call them storm clouds. Storm clouds help you locate where the issues reside and are specific, measurable, and observable. Storm clouds are problems arising in specific activities in the identified process. Like for example, we have the same uh, process that uh, we mentioned a while ago, but this time we have integrated the storm clouds. Uh, preparing the test, distributing the test paper. In this part, two answer sheets were missing, meaning there were lacking two uh, answer sheets. Then answering the test, eight students were talking to their seatmates. So that is an example of a storm cloud. Recording the test score, 10 third over 30 students' papers had items that were erroneously checked. Oh my God, so around 10, around 10 were incorrectly checked. Only two over 30 students correctly answered the difficult items. Okay, so as you can see here, this is an example of a storm cloud. Okay, so you can actually do the interview with the learner. Kamusta ang grades mo sa school ay mabuti and hindi ka nahihirapan sa lessons mo. So anong sa subject ka nahihirapan? Saan ka nahihirapan sa English? Anong lesson ka nahihirapan? Nagagawa mo bang naman i-memorize? Tinutulungan ka ni teacher kapag hindi mo magawa? Maayos naman po. Right. So as you can see, these are the questions being asked and you try to see if you can identify the storm clouds here. Okay, so that's just an example. Okay, so these are more examples of the storm clouds. You may pause the video if you like. Right, so for year two and three, review the school process you have improved and analyze the school process of the new priority improvement area. So flowchart in the school processes relevant to each a priority improvement area, documentation of interviews or observations. These are the outputs that you need to have by this point. Okay, so select area of focus. Focusing on a problem allows you to deal with fewer issues which can deeply you can deeply analyze. Improvements in your area of focus may contribute in addressing the bigger issues in the school. So that's why there is a need for you to focus. So to analyze your school context and see which area to prioritize, right? In choosing an area of focus, consider the most strategic storm cloud. Remember that uh, our resources are limited in schools and there's a need for us to really channel all our resources to that specific area or priority improvement area that will have greater impact in terms of improvement of our schools. So that's an example of a systems thinking process you need to be able to understand which among these systems and processes will greatly contribute to the success of your school. So focus in a storm cloud where most of the other storm clouds are linked, right? So you need to see and strategically channel your resources. So look for this. These are storm clouds that you can see here. And you can see that in, in the red box, you can see that this is something that is connected to most of the storm clouds. Right, so select an area of focus. You ask this question, what is the magnitude of the Hawaii? Is this happening? Where is it happening? And why does it happen? You need to answer that question. Identify all the storm clouds in the process. You map out. And then your output at this step should be the problem statement based on your area of focus. Always ask why. Okay. Okay, so at this point, you try to do we try to do the root cause analysis the root cause analysis is the deepest underlying cause of problems within any process so for example the weed symptoms of the problem of the surface it's something that is obvious that you see but um, even if you uproot the the weed try to get the weed um, basically later on the weed is going to grow back again because there are underlying causes and it's not something that you can easily see. You need to really look at it in a deeper way. So you need to identify the root. So the root is not the cause, it's not the solution. Find the root cause it is necessary it is to find the key strategic solution. For every effect, there is a root cause. Find and address the root cause rather than fix the effect as there is no end to the latter. Okay, so that is what I mentioned a while ago. So this is why you're going to do the root cause analysis in order for you to identify 
really what is the reason behind what you see. Okay? So you may use the following tools. You can use the fishbone diagram, the YY diagram, and the problem tree. Okay, so this is an example of a root cause uh, analysis. The fishbone diagram was uh, was used here. Okay, so as you can see, this is the YY diagram. You may pause the video to analyze the YY diagram. Uh, basically, you're just as asking the why. Why is the nat low? Uh, right. So because teaching and, and learning is not engaging because students are sick. Why is teaching learning experience not engaging? Okay, so because students are always absent. Why are students frequently absent? All right. So why are students sick because of contaminated contaminated water? Okay. So as you can see here, this is another example, a problem tree. So if answer is yes, you should probably prioritize this root cause. So you need to answer this. Is this root cause within your control? Can you change it? Uh, does the root cause cut across my priority improvement areas? Does solving the root cause result a school-wide improvement? Do you have enough resources to address the root cause? Is there sufficient time to think about the solution or the root cause? All right. So if your answer is yes, make sure that you um, include this in your uh, you prioritize this project because this has a very huge impact to your school. Okay, tips in identifying the root cause. So the root cause always happens before the effect. Every time the root cause happens, the effect follows. The effect or related effects would not happen if not for the root cause and other explanatory causes are not plausible. Okay. The PT undertakes a root cause analysis for the problems identified for year two and year three. So that's the project team. Uh, it's the project team is going to do it. Take note of that, not the school planning team. So 3.7% of the root cause to the SPT. Right, so the project team will present the following on the SPT, results of the FGDs, interviews with the learners, school process flow chart with storm clouds, area of focus, and then we're going to try to uh, agree upon which among them is the main focus of the priority improvement area. All right. So we're done with phase one. All right. So step two. Okay. So again, subscribe for more learnings. We will talk about the next phase, which is already planned. Okay, so we're done with assess. It's one of the most complex processes that you need to undergo under the continuous improvement process. However, um, this is one of the most crucial part, right? So the next step is found in part three, which is planning. Subscribe for more learnings. Thank you.